Moving on to item number 31. Point M with coordinates 2, negative 3 is the midpoint of segment KJ. If K has coordinates 4, negative 1, find the coordinates of J. Is it A, B, C, or D? So recall earlier in item number 30, the formula for midpoint, but this time, one of the missing, uh, one of the, that one that's what, the one that we're looking for is the other endpoint. And so for such, we will just do the substitution. Let's say the missing endpoint has coordinates x sub 2, y sub 2. So by substitution, we have 2 negative 3 is equal to that 1, 4 plus x sub 2 all over 2, comma negative 1 plus y sub 2 all over 2. So there is a correspondence now. This 2 is equal to this 4 plus x sub 2 all over 2, whereas this negative 3 is equal to negative 1 plus y sub 2 all over 2. Solving for the first equation, multiplying here both sides by 2 gives 4 equals 4 plus x sub 2 minus 4 both sides. You have 0 equals x sub 2. For the second equation here, multiplying both, uh, both sides by 2, we have negative 6 equals negative 1 plus y sub 2. We have cleared off the fractions. We need y sub 2, so we need to subtract both sides, or I mean to add both sides by 1. Hence, negative 6 plus 1 will give you negative 5 as y sub 2. And since we have the value of x and y now, of, so therefore, combining them into a single coordinate or into a single point, you have j with coordinate 0, negative 5. And that is letter D. Okay. 32. The center of a circle is 1, 3. If 4, 7 is a point on the circle, determine the area in square units of the circle. Is it 25, 5, 36, 5, 49, 5, or 64, 5? To better solve this problem, probably it would be good if we know the, cent the length of the radius. So here is an illustration of 1, 3 as a center and 4, 7 as a point on the circle. So you could see that the distance between them or the segment between them is in fact the radius. Uh, the one that connect that's connecting these two points is a radius. And to get the length of the radius, we need to utilize the distance formula, which is the one I mentioned earlier. So we could let this uh, be your x sub 1, y sub 1. This is your y sub uh, x sub 2, y sub 2. And by substitution, you have r, which is your radius, by the way. Don't be confused. D here is for distance, not diameter. Be careful. So the radius is equal to the square root of the square of 4 minus 1 plus 7 minus 3 quantity squared. 4 minus 1, it's 3 squared. So you have the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. That's 9 plus 16 or 25. And the radius, therefore, is 5 units long. And knowing that the area of the circle is pi r squared, by substitution, you have pi times 5 squared, which is 25 pi square units, letter A. 33. A certain polyhedron has eight vertices and 10 faces. How many, how many edges does it have? Does it have 16, 18, 20, or 21 edges? So edges are like the straight, the lines, no? the meeting point of the two planes in your uh, polyhedron, for example. And I hope you could still recall Euler's formula for polyhedra that states that in any polyhedron, the number of vertices minus the number of edges plus the number of faces is always equal to 2. And with such, substituting the given, 
we have 8 minus E plus 10 equals 2. The 8 plus 10 could be simplified as 18. So you have 18 minus E equals 2. And adding uh, negative to both sides and subtracting uh, and adding E both sides, you have 18 minus 2 equals E or that 16 as the number of edges, letter A. I hope you got it right. 34. The most beautiful equation in the history of mathematics is which of this? Is it letter A, the area, the formula for uh, Euler's formula for polyhedra, the quadratic formula, the e to the i pi plus 1 equals 0, or letter D, the binomial expansion? And the correct answer here is it's not letter A, although it's one of the most beautiful equations. It's not the quadratic formula either, but many mathematicians agree that it is letter C. E to the i pi plus 1 equals 0. E, your uh, natural logarithm, the base of your natural logarithms. I, the imaginary unit. Pi, which is, a prox which is in fact the ratio of the circumference in the diameter. 1 as the additive identity, 0 as the multiplicative identity. So it combines five constants into one equation. And we have D, it's uh, the binomial expansion. It's not. Letter C is the correct answer. Number 35. Express in standard form and identify the center and the radius of x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 6y minus 3 equals 0. Did you go for A, B, C, or D? From this one, using a similar technique earlier, so grouping terms with the same variable, you have x squared plus 4x plus another uh, group, which is y squared minus 6y, and equate that to 3. Completing the square here, 4 divided by four, uh, 2, that's 2, you square it. So you have to add 4 here. On the second one, you divide this one by 2, negative 6, uh, negative 6 divided by 2, it's negative 3. Then you square it, that will give you plus 9. And I added 4 and 9 on the left. I should also add 4 and 9 on the right to maintain equality. So... This one now could be factored as x plus 2 quantity squared. The second group here could be factored as y minus 3 quantity squared equals 3 plus 4 plus 9 or 16. And equating each of these to 0, so you have negative 2 and 3, which is now the coordinates of your center. And this 16, remember, is the value of your r squared. Hence, taking the principal square root, you got the value of the radius, which is four units. And hence, the center is at negative two, three with a radius of four units, letter D. I hope you got it. 36. A circle passes through the points for two, negative three, one, and five, negative five. Determine the equation of the circle in the form x squared plus y squared plus cx plus dy plus e equals zero. Do you agree with A, B, C, or D? There are many ways of doing this, and you could make use of what we call uh, elimination. You substitute this values and uh, perform elimination in this one, or you could take them, you could test each choice and check if for two, negative three, one, and five, negative five satisfies them. If each of these three points satisfy the equation, then therefore that is correct. So let's try letter A. Let's try for two. If you replace all x's by fours, by 4 and all y's by 2, you will arrive to 4 squared plus 2 squared minus 2 times 4 plus 4 times 2 minus 20. Simplifying this, 
give 16 plus 4 minus 8 plus 8 minus 20. And what's the value of this when simplified? It gives us 0. And you see, it's 0 here. So therefore, I'm sure that they are equal with one another. It satisfies this one. How about for the second one? For negative 3, 1. Let's substitute it to the same equation. You will have negative 3 quantity squared plus 1 squared minus 2 times negative 3 plus 4 times 1 minus 20. You will have 9 plus 1 plus 6 plus 4 minus 20, which when simplified is what? It's equal to 0 as well. And it's 0 here as well. So therefore, it's satisfied. For the third one, 5 negative 5, you will have square of 5 plus square of negative 5 minus 2 times 5 plus 4 times negative 5 minus 20. So sub, um, simplifying each term gives us 25 plus 25 minus 10 minus 20 minus 20, which is again 0. So it satisfies this. Seeing that each of the three points satisfy option A, so we are sure that A is the correct answer here. You could verify on your own options B, C, and D, but I'm sure that they will not satisfy them. Okay. That the three points will not satisfy the, the given equation. So we're sure with letter A. 37. Determine if the equation represents a circle that exists, a point circle, or a graph that does not exist. x squared plus y squared plus 4x plus 8y plus 100 equals 0. Is it a point circle does not exist, a circle that exists, or cannot be determined? The technique here is expressing the given equation in standard form. So completing the square again, so like this. Um, grouping together terms with the same variable. I will complete a square here, 4 divided by 2. That's 2 squared, that's 4. So I will add 4 here. Here, 8 divided by 2, that's 4 squared, that's 16. I added 4 and 16 here. I also added 4 and 16 here. And you could see that it becomes x plus 2 quantity squared plus y plus 4 quantity squared equals negative 80. Remember, this here in standard form is your r squared. But since r squared is negative 80, but remember, r here is not a real number then because there's no such thing as a real number that when squared becomes a negative number. Thus, this circle cannot have a real radius and thus cannot exist. Hence, Letter B is the answer. 38. Which of these numerical values or variables is discrete? Is it speed of cars, weight of athletes, number of stars, or distance in meters? Um, in terms of numerical data, it could either be discrete or continuous. Discrete is something that you could count. Continuous is something that is measurable. So in this case, speed is actually measured. It's not counted. So this is continuous. Continuous variables could also assume non-integer values, by the way, whereas discrete values assume um, whole number values or uh, natural number values. For B, weight of athletes, it's also continuous. The number of stars is discrete. Distance in meters is continuous. Hence, letter C is the correct answer here. 39. What is the limit of the square root of 16x to the fourth plus 1 all over x squared plus 3x minus 1 as n approaches infinity? We are talking about limits at infinity. Is it 4, 8, 16, or 32? For this one, we could see that the highest exponent of the variable x is 2. Here, if you take the square root of x to the fourth, that's square root of x to the fourth is x squared, right? So therefore, the highest is square root of x to the fourth 
or simply at the absolute value of your x squared. So the technique here is dividing each term by x squared or the square root of, I mean the absolute value of x to the fourth. I utilize this because it's inside the radical sign. If I take the square root of x to the fourth, it will be x squared still, so the same thing. We divided uh, both numerator and denominator by x squared, something like that. So let's see now. So with that, this is, uh, here I divided by x to the fourth because it's still under the radical sign. Here I just divided by x squared. And doing such, if you divide this, it will become 16 plus. If you have one over x to the fourth, the limit of that as n approaches infinity is zero. Why? Because as n approaches a very large number, the value of this becomes smaller and smaller until such time that it's like very near or close to zero. It has a limit of zero. All over, this is one. If you have uh, three over x, its still limit to infinity is still zero. And in fact, if you have one over x raised to a certain k, as k approaches infinity there, and k is a positive number, then I'm sure that it will be zero as well, its limits. So the numerator will become the square root of 16 plus zero all over one plus zero minus zero, which is square root of uh, 16 uh, is four all over one, which is simply four. Hence the correct answer here is letter A. 40, which of the following statements is the contrapositive of the statement? If a triangle is equilateral, then it is equiangular. Is letter A the contrapositive? And the correct answer is no. It's in fact the converse. When we speak about if you have a statement, an if-then statement, if P implies Q, this one, if Q implies P, that's your converse. But what about the inverse? You are still following the sequence. However, P implies Q has an inverse of not P, not Q. That's why if a triangle is not equilateral, then it is not equiangular. That's the inverse. In fact, letter C is the contrapositive. When we say contrapositive, if you have the statement P implies Q, then its contrapositive is the uh, converse of the inverse. That is, if not Q, then not P. And lastly, D is not the correct answer. So C here is correct. And I hope you got this correctly. <laughs>